Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and today we're talking about iOS 16.2. Yes, iOS 16.2 is here with beta 1 and it brings quite a lot of new features and changes. Now, I thought Apple would slow down with new features and changes as we had quite a lot of those on iOS 16.1, which was just released to the public. But now we have iOS 16.2 on beta 1 and it actually has quite a lot of new features and some really interesting and very useful ones. Now before we get started, just want to ask you guys for a really quick favor. Most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed to the channel yet. So if you're enjoying the videos and you, you want to see more of them, please make sure to do so. It will really help the channel a lot. Now let's get started first of all with the size of the update. Now the beta one will be of course bigger. It should come to device at around 5 gigs the other updates will be smaller but depending on different devices and different software that you might have currently installed in your device if you decide to update to iOS 16.2 beta 1 then expect an update at around 5 gigs and now let's take a look at the build number of iOS 16.2 now this one is really interesting if we take a look at the build number right here you can see that the build number ends with an E so it's 20C5032E which means that we won't actually get a lot of betas of iOS 16.2. I'm expecting Apple to release four or five betas in total for iOS 16.2 before it gets released to the public. And now let's get into the really interesting new features and changes that iOS 16.2 will bring to your device. Now, first of all, of course, we have the new Freeform app. Now, Apple has talked about this. It's finally here. Of course, you can get it. On your iphone or ipad running ios 16.2 so this app will basically let you collaborate on real time so if you're doing things here like sketching or anything you're doing someone else that is using this app with you you're collaborating they will see the changes on real time so if i just add something here they will see it on real time on their device as well you can of course type anything you want like sketch anything you want here we'll have different tools and just right there at the top you will have the option to actually export this as a pdf file you can rename it duplicate it or just search anything you want on this project now of course if you want to share it you can tap right there and you can go ahead and share this project now currently this has quite a lot of bugs of course it's a new app so expect it to become a bit better of course with the new betas and with the initial release it should be a lot lot better so this is basically the interface here you will add the you have the ability to actually add like photos you can add links you can scan something add a photo from the camera or add it from your photo library and then you will have at the top right there the redo and undo button and if you just go back you will have here all of your boards you can go back once more and you will have all of your boards your recents your shared and of course your favorites as well and a button here to quickly start a new board now we have some changes on the lock screen as well we have new lock screen widgets so you will have new widgets for sleep so you will have your most recent sleep and of course you will have your schedule and all that which you can have in the smaller or the bigger widget on the lock screen so let's just head on to the widgets panel so when you go to sleep under the lock screen widgets this is what you will see so you will have data and schedule you will have the small and of course the bigger one and you will have sleep you can view here more your most recent sleep se session of course here and here with the smaller one now i don't really use this feature i've just added some data there just for reference but if you use the sleep feature on ios you can now have it on the lock screen of your device now this feature right here is really interesting it is called unintentional sos calls so if you're by accident make an sos call you can now actually report it so this is what you will see right here of course a big shout out to iDevice help he discovered this feature actually it happened to him so that's how he discovered the feature so it is here you can see you can actually submit a report here telling that you accidentally made the call really interesting of course very very useful now this feature right here is really interesting as well the ability to turn off hide ip address for different websites so individually you can actually turn it off for any website that you visit 
on Safari. Now, I got this screenshot from iOS beta on Reddit. I don't know why, but I'm not getting this option on Safari on my device, even though it's on iOS 16.2, but a lot of people actually got this and right here you can see it will let you pick any website that you want and you can actually turn off hide IP address for that website. Moving on to Siri and search, head on to your settings, go to Siri and search. And if you go right here to Siri responses, now you will actually get three different options. So it used to be preferred spoken responses and automatic. Now you will also get preferred silent responses automatic and of course also the old one prefers spoken responses i don't know how many times apple did change this with ios 16 but if you go to your settings go to general and go to software update it says ios 16.2 it's that's like a bigger bolder font and it says ios is up to date this has actually been changed a lot on ios 16 and it's it has been changed with ios 16.2 as well moving on to the shortcuts app Apple did a great job with shortcuts on iOS 16.2. They have added actions to manage lock screens and of course get the wallpapers, set the wallpapers and switch the wallpapers as well. So this is the action here to get the wallpapers. You can see get all wallpapers. If you tap on all right here, you can choose current or you can of course ask each time. Then we have the other one to switch between different wallpapers. So you can see right here, if you tap on wallpaper, it will show you all the different lock screens that you have currently on your device. And you can choose from which you wanna actually switch. So you just basically select it right there and tap on done. And we also have here set wallpaper photo. So set default paper to, you can choose the image right there and you can choose for lock screen and home screen as well. Another feature that has made a comeback with iOS 16.2 is under the TV section. So if you go to TV, now you will find here live activities. If you go here, it's actually blank. You won't see anything here, but it works now. Things like, like apps like NBA and apps like that will work with live activities on iOS 16.2 beta one. Now that we're done with all those new features and changes, hopefully we'll get a lot more with beta two. Here we have the performance of iOS 16.2 beta one. Always keep in mind that this is a beta one and of course it will and it should improve on the next betas. So here we have iOS 16.2 beta one, a single core score of 1,892. And here we have iOS 16.1 final, 1,888, so we have a slight increase there on the single core score, while we have a slight drop on the multi-core score. So this is iOS 16.1 final here, 5,537, while we have 5,492 here on iOS 16.2 beta one. But again, this is still beta one and expected to improve way more on the next few betas. Now this update has been out now for less than two days and of course I don't think this is the right time to talk about battery performance about this update since it's okay to actually wait for a few more days and see how the battery will perform but for these past few hours this is what I got on battery so here we have the last day which of course I had this update installed on my device. So at around 60% of battery, five hours and 22 minutes. Now, of course, you have to keep in mind that this is a newer device with a maximum capacity of 100. So you should expect it to have better battery performance. But again, on this like few hours that I have used it, I didn't actually notice any major difference on battery life from iOS 16.1. And last but not least, should you update? Well, if you're running iOS 16 on your main device, stay there if you have iOS 16.1. I don't think there's a big reason to actually update to iOS 16.2 because it's a beta and of course always there will be problems, there will be bugs. So it's best to actually wait maybe for the next few betas before you actually update your device. If you have a spare device that you just, want, you just want to try out the new software, you can of course go ahead and update. So what's next? Now I expect Apple to actually release a new beta next week. So I would expect them to release probably at around four betas than the RC version and then the 
final release of iOS 16.2 and I would expect them to release it somewhere around the end of November. That's the time frame that I'm putting on this release. Hopefully that will happen. And of course, based on the build number of iOS 16.2, I don't actually expect Apple to release a ton of data for this update. So that's basically it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead, leave a like if you did, subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next one.